John Mendez here and we're doing another of our how-tos. This time we're looking at trailering, thinking about towing something on the road. Hopefully when you buy your nice new boat or you buy a second-hand boat, it's been set up for the trailer. But we're just going to chat through things you need to think about, areas of concern and perhaps some best practice. Now we've managed to borrow a rather nice Van Clays stainless steel trailer. Massive advantage of that is it's just not going to corrode. Anyone that's had a trailer with any form of boat launching knows they just turn into rust in seconds. So stainless steel trailer, got to be the way to go. Trailers all have a weight plate on them which allows you to work out how much it will carry. Now this crowd are quite clever. They actually used a numbering system to tell you what it will carry. So this is a two ton trailer. It's got uh, 750 kilos of weight in the trailer itself. So you can carry a two ton boat. That keeps you nicely below the UK towing limits. So for 2750 in this number, what it's really meaning is the total of boat and trailer is 2750 kilos. And you need a tow truck or van that's man enough for that. And then the little sticker not only gives you the total mass, and then it says, what can our nose weight be? And it says no more than 150 kilos. That would be really heavy. And then it gives the two axle weight. So total altogether, 2750 for this setup. Really nice in stainless. I'd have this tomorrow. So if we start at the bow of the boat, we've had this boat popped on this trailer. Hasn't been set up, so we're just going to go through the things that we need to think about. One of the crucial bits is something called the nose weight. That is how heavy is the actual trailer hitch onto the back of the towing vehicle. So this little bit here, how much is this weigh? Now, traditionally we used to talk about 50 kilos, maybe 75 kilos of nose weight. Now you can also use something called 4% of the total mass of what you're towing. So whichever of those is giving you the right sort of figure, 50 to 75 kilos is always something I've used as a, as a rough rule of thumb, and I can judge that quite well when it's on the jockey wheel, I can lift it, and if I don't go blue in the face, it's 50 to 75 kilos. If I go blue in the face, it's more and needs adjusting. So that's the first thing we're gonna think about, the actual nose weight. If we've got too much weight on the bow of the boat, on the front of the trailer, that's pushing down on the rear of your car or your tow truck, that means your front wheels, which do steering and most of your braking, are far too light. There's not enough weight there, and that's really dangerous. Conversely, if we've got too much weight on the rear of the trailer and the nose weight on, on the back of the boat car is too light, that can make the trailer fishtail and make it really hard to control. So it's not just a common sense, it's a real safety thing. Now to adjust, I only on this one need one thing, a 17mm spanner. All the nuts are 17mm, so whether I'm adjusting the setup at the front or even having to move the axles back and forth so I get the separation and the weight correct on them, I can do it with that. Because it's a brake trailer, if I move the axles, the brake activation system, which works off the back of the car as you brake, the weight comes forward, puts the brakes on. If I move the axles, I need to adjust the length of the bar which puts the brakes on, and that's nice and simple. There's a simple bar in the middle. We lengthen or shorten it to make sure the brakes come on correctly. The next thing we always got to look at is how is the boat strapped down? And you can see on here, we've got a strap which is pulling it forward, and we also got a strap pulling it aft. And the reason for that is that this boat and this arrangement here, the attachment point or the headstock, hasn't been set for this boat. We really want this part here to be either side of this D-ring, so the whole boat is held into this fitting. And to do that, we've got to raise this and move it forward. So while we're doing our little bit of filming, the man's going to come and have a little fiddle and we'll show you what that looks like when we're done. And that will then make it much, much safer. So just while it's been moved around the boatyard, they've put a strap to stop it going forwards and a strap to stop it going backwards, ideally should be between these wheels. So we're going to see that happen a bit later on. Next thing we're going to talk about is the jockey wheel. Now the jockey wheel's primary purpose is allowing you to move the boat around without the tow truck on. Um, this one's a bit big for manual moving, but it allows you to do small adjustments, but it also allows you to keep the trailer off the floor, particularly when you want to put the tow truck on. And the way we do that is we unwind the handle. Got to go the right way, that way, that's it. And then we just have to hold it still so it doesn't over-rotate. 
once we've got it down a reasonable bit, we can release the big handle and the whole thing comes down. And then we lock that off. And now as I unwind, what it's doing is it would lift the actual trailer off the truck. So if I released the handle, I could then take the weight of this just on the jockey wheel. And we'll show you why in a moment. So I'm just going to do a couple more winds. Then I'm going to go and get my chock. Because when I attach the tow truck from this, if it's not chocked, it could roll away. So I like to put a block of wood or some purpose-made chocks behind the wheels to stop it moving. Nearly all trailers have a handbrake similar to this. You put it on by push the button and pull upwards. My problem with them is that they get used very rarely. Quite often the boat's put in a boat yard, sits on the trailer for six months, the brake sees in position, you release the handbrake and the wheels won't turn. So I'm not a fan of the handbrake. Key things that we need to remember though is it must be off for towing, that's horizontal. And this little gadget here, which is the safety brake puller, quite often there's a clip for it to go on to, that must be attached to the tow vehicle. If the hitch was to come loose, this would pull the brakes and the trailer would come to a halt. Just while we're here, we mentioned the electrical connections. Now, this is the latest style, which have a push and twist, so it needs to be rotated clockwise. We lift, pop it in, and then we rotate the fitting like so, and that then locks it all in place. Really important that you make sure that this has got some slack because as the trailer moves, if you pull this tight, this will get pulled out. So really important that we disconnect this when we're going to disconnect the car. Really important that we reconnect it when we're going towing. And most important that we go behind and have a look at the lights and make sure they actually work. Okay, so we've chocked the wheels. Um, we've got two little orange chocks which are designed for that sort of thing. And I like the big bit of wood because I prefer that. It's nice and subtle and it really works. So now we're just going to move the truck forward so you can see how we connect and release. So I've put the weight of the trailer onto my wheel and now I'm going to release here and wind down at the same moment. So the wheel's going down, the trailer's going up and now he'll just move forward, job's done. So to reconnect, at this point, I would gently wind the handle. The truck's connected. The next most important thing is to wind the wheel up lots. So I release the pull-up, lock that off, and then I wind again So that, that is locked secure because we do not want this coming off as we tow. Back to the hitch lock, take the safety chain, put that on, make sure it's round there. Sometimes there's a catch and then I'd reattach those electrics. When you're strapping your boat down, do try and buy the pucker straps. These are actually rated at a five ton loading, well four and a half metric tons, 50 mil straps and normally three to five tonne in low eight loading. If you've got four straps, that's around about 12 tonne of pull. That's plenty enough for this boat, but don't use the skinny one inch ones on a boat of this weight and size. Make sure you've got the right gear. So we've adjusted the boat on the trailer. That's moved the whole boat slightly further aft because we've adjusted this so that the D-ring is nicely between these two rollers and our strap now goes under the first roller. So it's physically pulling the boat forward, but also down so it's holding the hull into the rollers. That makes the boat really, really safe. Our orange strap is our additional safety strap, and that is pulling the boat aft. So this one pulls it forward, this one pulls it aft. Those two between them lock it beautifully. And then the two straps on the rear, they hold the boat both down onto the trailer, and they're also pulling forward, so it's locked against this. So those strapping mechanisms mean that we end up with a really safe boat and the nose weight now is really comfy. It's not too heavy, not the boat pushing the car, and not the car being too sky high on the front and unable to steer and brake properly. Really worth doing. Mm -hmm.